face. Fellow, come from the throng, look upon Caesar. What says Caesar now? Many men shall die. The names are pricked. Your brother too must die. Consent to Lepidus? I do consent. Prick him down, Antony. Upon condition, Publius shall not live. Who is your sister's son, Mark Antony? He shall not live. Look with the spot I damn him. But Lepidus, you go to Caesar's house. Fetch the world hither, and we shall determine and proud to cut us some charges and legacies. What shall I find you here? Or here, or at the This slight and marital man needs to be set on errands. Is it fit? The threefold world divided, he should stand one of the three to share it? So you thought him and took his voice, who should be pricked to die in our black sentence or prescription. Octavius, I have seen more days than you, and though we lay these honors on this man to ease ourselves of Ivory's slanderous loads, he should not be fair than out of the ass. Bears gold to grow in his sweet under the business either led or driven as we point the way. And heaven brought our treasure where we will, then take me down in his throat and turn him off like to the empty ass to shake his ears and graze in comments. You may do your will, but he is a tried and valiant soldier. So is my horse, Octavius, and for that I do appoint him sorrow provender. It is a creature that I teach to fight to win. To stop to run directly on his corporal motion governed by my spirit, and in some taste is libidus, but so. He must be taught and trained to bid go forth. A very spirited fellow, one that feeds on objects, arts, and imitations, which ought to be used and sell by other men. But yet his fashion do, do not talk of him, but as probably he now Octavius, listen great things and Brutus and Cassius. Our loving powers were straight make keen. Therefore, let our alliance be combined. Our best friends made our means stretched. And let us presently go sit in council and how covert maters be best in disclosed. And open pearl stirs answered. Let us do so, for we are at stake and bide about with many enemies, and some that smile have in their hearts, I fear, millions of mischiefs. Lucius, where is Cassius? He is at hand, and Pandarius is come to you with salutation from his master. He greets me well, your master Pandarius. In his own changes or by ill officers have given me some worthy cause to wish, things done but undone. But if he be at heart, I shall be satisfied. I do not doubt but that my noble master will appear such as he is full of regard and honor. He's not doubted a word, Lucilius. How he received you may be resolved. With respect and courtesy, enough but not with such familiar instances, nor with such free and friendly conference as he hath used. <coughs> Thou hast described a hot friend cooling ever know, Lucilius. When love begins to sicken and decay, it's used with an enforced ceremony. There are no tricks in plain and simple forth, but how hollow men like horses hot of hand make gallant show and promise of their mettle. But when they should endure the bloody spur, they fall their crests and like deceitful jades sink in the trial. Come his army. They mean this night in Star Sardis to be quartered, the great part, the horse in general, and come with caskets. Hark, he has arrived. Brutus, my most noble brother. Hello! You have done me wrong. Judge me, you gods. Have I wronged my enemies? And if not, how thy shall I wrong my brother? Brutus, the silver form of yours hides wrong, and when you do that. Cassius, speak intent. Speak your grief softly. I do know you well. Before the eyes of both our armies here, which perceive nothing. But love from us, let us not wrangle. Bid them move away, then in my tent, Cassius, enlarge your griefs, and I shall provide you an audience. There he is, better commanders than they try to talk about. Lucilius, do you the like, and let no man come to our tent until our conference is done. Will Lucilius and Tintius guard our door, 